All right, so we are talking about the research essay. So the first thing I'm going to do is a screen share and walk you through the materials that are in um, week 10. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and do that screen share, and I'll walk you through the materials that are in week 10. There's a lot, uh, so I want to kind of help you prioritize them a little bit. Okay, now they're the same in all sections of our uh, 101 online class. So if this isn't your number, like if you're not in uh, 10628, that's okay. It's the same in 11051 and 11109. Um, so we're in our weekly assignments. And remember, um, if you're going by the activity stream, you're missing most of it, right? Um, when you get into Blackboard every day, uh, immediately close the activity stream. If I could disable it, I would. Um, and go to your courses and then go into your weekly assignments. Um, reminding you that your announcements are over here on the side. Um, there are also those pop-ups that pop up in front of you. Don't close those. Those aren't an annoying pop-up ad. Those are me trying to communicate with you. Uh, it should also be sending you an email, those announcements, um, but you might need to check your other folder. I know that anything that gets sent to me through Blackboard ends up in my other folder. Um, so be checking your Lawson State email for those announcements, as well as checking here every day. If you miss one, you can look here and you can see all of the announcements I've posted all semester. Um, and then, of course, um, you should be going into your week's worth, your week's information. Reminder, if for some bizarre reason you have not signed up for Criterion Software Access yet, the information is up here under Textbook and Criterion Access. That's going to be required again in week 12, um, and uh, it's required. So the Criterion sign-up information is all here, um, and then there's your, your textbook information, okay? But I'm going to actually close that up because we don't need to look at every chapter in the textbook right now. All right. Um, so when our weekly assignments, we're in week 10. The most recent week visible is always uh, the current week. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do the drop down for week 10. Um, now, our unit readings are textbook readings, and you can access those just up above. Um, and uh, argument, essay, topic, and instruction. So I'm going to take a second and open that because that tells us what we're writing about, right? We are writing an argument essay over whether the death penalty should be allowed. There's some preliminary information here. Make sure you don't plagiarize that in your essay. Um, <laughs> that comes from the Opposing Viewpoints Database Overview. Um, and uh, don't use it as your own writing. Um, if you do, find it in the Opposing Viewpoints um, database overview and quote it and cite it properly. Um, but if it didn't come out of your own head, it should be quoted and cited, okay? Um, so as a matter of fact, the person who wrote this assignment, not me, should have quoted and cited this information. <laughs> Just saying. All right, so um, make sure that you do that. Um, it's asking you to take a stand, either pro-death penalty or against the death penalty. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you pick um, because uh, the real exercise here is not uh, convincing me to agree with you. It's showing me that you know how to write an argument essay and back yourself up using research, okay? All right, so... Um, those are the instructions, but let's talk about the source material. Your essay needs to be at least a thousand words. So this is a longer essay than usual, okay? Um, it says, let's just run through it. Compose an argument, um, argumentative essay that answers this question, uh, the one above. Your essay must use at least three scholarly sources to help you make your own argument. Don't simply report what scholars say. Use what they say to advance your argument. So it's not a book report. I read these three things, and here's what they say. It's, I have an opinion, and these guys agree with me, right? Um, so it's, it's a little bit different. Um, then just find the sources and tell me what they say. You're trying to make sure you know how to use it to support your own views. Um, 
The use of scholarly source in your essay will be either a direct quotation from it or a paraphrase of it. Um, all paraphrases and quotations must be three things, integrated into the grammar of a complete sentence. And we'll go over that in a minute. Cited with a correctly formatted in-text citation and documented properly with an MLA works cited entry format at the end of your essay. Uh, this was a slightly longer essay than usual. Um, you formulate your own opinions and support it. Consider these aspects of the problem, morality, constitutionality, deterrence, retribution. If you need, um, if you need a dictionary to help you with any of the terms that are here, um, definitely grab some definitions for any terms that aren't familiar to you already. It says your source materials must be scholarly, not merely popular. Um, we will discuss the difference in class. We're talking about the database sources and we're talking about that today. Um, we're using the library's database and today I'm going to make sure you know how to get onto that library database. Um, we're not looking for Wikipedia, we're not looking for encyclopedias, um, and we're not looking for Google stuff. Um, we have a learning goal for our students in the department that says that you know how to use the Lawson State Library databases. So that's what this research essay is trying to prove. And if you go to Google, it's not hitting that goal. Okay. Um, I know you know how to find things on Google. You live in the 21st century. We all know how to find things on Google. We don't all know how to get things out of the database. And that's the skill we're practicing. Okay. This essay is actually worth 200 points. That's twice as much as the other essays because it's a lot of work, right? Um, and it's, um, you remember your essay average is worth about 40% of your overall grade. So this is without a doubt the most important uh, assignment of the semester, which is why I'm going to be here live with you this week, next week, and again in week 12. Okay, so weeks 10, 11, and 12, I really, really, really would love to see as many of you as possible here live. All right. Um, I'm going to close that out, uh, at least I think I am. I've got to move us to close it out, right? Um, and then I'm going to make sure that you know what other handouts. We're going to go over this handout in a minute. This is how to use quotes and how to set up a works cited list, specifically for an article from a database. Um, there's a handout that's a sample source paragraph, what it ought to look like, um, and, and uh, that. Um, video tutorial writing argument essays, that's um, going over what your chapter has to say about argument essays. Remember that your thesis in this one needs to be your opinion stated nice and clearly. And then you're really just backing it up with your reasons. Reason one, reason two, reason three, reason four, right? Um, there's a video here on finding sources. And that's the video that tells you how to use the Lawson database. Okay, I'm going to go over it with you briefly today, um, but this video goes into it in a lot more depth. So make sure you look at this uh, video on finding sources. Okay, there's a video tutorial on using sources, which goes over this sample source paragraph and the using sources handout. So if you if you have a printer at home, I would print this handout and then have it with me while I watch this video. Okay, um, avoiding plagiarism in research essays is really all about making sure your reader knows every step of the way where you got your information. Okay, um, there are two quizzes, one on finding sources and one on source use. Those quizzes, the, the questions and answers come directly from the video on finding sources and on source use. So make sure you're watching those videos. Okay. Um, and then uh, the week we're, we're working just this week on just one source paragraph to make sure you're getting source paragraphs right before you write the rest of the paper, right? Because that's the essential skill. And if you're confused about it, you're just going to flunk that draft. And that would be frustrating. And I don't want you to get frustrated. I want you to succeed. Okay, so we're doing just, okay, do you have the source paragraph yet? So um, let's actually open this using quotes handout. There are two handouts here. Um, one is on using quotes and one's the work cited list. I'm going to open the using quotes one first and go over that with you. Okay, so let's get that open. 
Questions about what's in this week while this is opening? All right, you guys have a big advantage for coming uh, today because I, in, in semesters where we were allowed to have students come to campus, my students would blow all this off, flunk the research essay, have to come in for a review uh, to go over this stuff, and I would sh walk them through this, and then they'd say, oh, now I understand. I'm like, really, you had to have somebody read your hand out to you. Um, <laughs> but it is confusing. It is hard. And sometimes it does help. All right. So this is a beginner's guide to building a source paragraph. So literally any time you use a source, whether it's an internet source or a library source or a dictionary, you're going to use these steps in any paper ever. Okay, so if it's your psychology paper, even if she wants you to use APA style, you still go through these steps for how to use the source responsibly. If you want to put um, some statistics in a paper for history class or for sociology class, you go through these steps. Okay, every time, every source, in every class, for every paper. Anytime you want to use a source, even a dictionary, even the Bible right? <laughs> you're going to use these steps. So the first step is that your paragraph, if it's a source paragraph, now remember your thesis and your conclusion, they're not source paragraphs. Those are all you, okay? That's all you talking about your opinion and establishing your reasons for believing what you believe, okay? Um, so those are all you. But here in the middle of our research essay, we're using some source paragraphs. Um, now, the source paragraphs, you still need to be the star of the show, right? Your topic sentence and your analysis of what you're using still need to be the most important part because your view and your ability to articulate your view is still the most important thing here. The sources are just there to back you up, make you sound smart, okay? All right. Um, so the first thing you do is create a topic sentence for the paragraph that's about the ideas of the thesis. So if reason number one for you for opposing the death penalty is the cost of it, then you have a topic sentence that says the death penalty is too expensive, period, right? <laughs> that's what you're going to talk about in this paragraph. Or my first reason for opposing the death penalty is that it's too expensive. Um, so... Uh, you create that topic sentence. Then I want you to spend a couple of sentences. It does it in one here, but I want to encourage you to use a couple of sentences to introduce your source, okay? And that means that before you quote anybody, you need to introduce them, okay? Think about a source as an actual person that you're bringing into a conversation, Right? So let's pretend you're going to your grandma's house and you're bringing a friend she's never met. Okay? If you just let that person start talking to your grandma, your grandma is going to be annoyed, confused, taken aback. She's going to be like, who is this person and why is he talking to me? Right? <laughs> you really need to tell people who's talking to them. Right? Um, so just in the same way that you would say to your grandma, hi, grandma, this is my friend Jason. He comes to church with me, and I brought him over here to meet you. You're going to do the same with your author. Here's the author. They wrote an article called this, and the article's about this. So a sentence to tell us who the author is, a sentence to tell us who, what the title of the article is, maybe also where it appeared, like this is from the Washington Post or this is from the New York Times. Um, and then a sentence, maybe two, summarizing the article overall, like what it's about. Like he's, I met him at church and I brought him over to meet you, right? Uh, just a sentence telling us what it's about. Um, that way we're ready to hear that and we're, we're understanding who's talking to us and we're good, okay? Um, so take a few sentences to do that. The next step is quote integration. And 
People make this harder than it needs to be. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see it a little better, okay? It's just this, see this? He contends that, he says, he argues, he quote, he, he um, contends, he asserts. Little tiny phrase that makes your quote part of a longer sentence, but it's crucial, right? Um, it's also part of where you show your personality and your opinion. If you're talking about somebody making a point that you think sounds lame, you can say he whines, right? <laughs> he complains, he whines, right? If you think it's strong, then he asserts, he argues, he points out, he teaches us, right? It's those things. So you have a chance to even get a little bit of your opinion across in those phrases. So they're, they're little, they don't have to be long or complicated, but they're there, and I hope it's not he says all the time, because there's others that you can choose from, okay? Um, just put those in there. Try to keep quote integration separate from your source introduction. A lot of students will try to write these long, I had this problem at UAB, oh Lord, my UAB students used to love to do this. They would say, in his article, I hate puppies, Joe Jorgensen says that comma quote. Blah! It's so much all at once, right? Introduce somebody first and then let them speak, right? Um, don't have somebody come in all aggressive with your grandma. Hi, I'm Jason. I went, I go to church with your daughter and I'd just like to say blah, blah, blah. It's a little too much, right? So it also can cause all sorts of problems with your grammar. Um, it can make it really hard to manage that much information in one sentence and still keep it grammatical. So just like if you're eating a big meal, if you've got a big hamburger, you take a lot of bites and don't cram it all into your face at once, right? So when you have a lot of information to get across, an author, a title, a summary, a quote, you do those in separate bites, okay? Just little pieces, one at a time, okay? Um, all right, so it says you may quote more than once in a paragraph, but in this essay, I'm recommending that you use at least three quotes in a paragraph, but you keep each one relatively short so that you can put your own analysis after it, okay? So you're aiming for three short quotes with analysis after each one, okay? Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Um, the next step is a citation. And you need a citation every time you use a source, even if you're just giving statistics. If you just want to say how many people were executed last year, that needs all of these steps. Who told you how many people were executed last year? Where did they tell it to you? And then a citation for that. Even if you don't put that statistic in quotation marks, that's okay. It's just a fact. But if you didn't come up with that fact, you go through these steps and you provide a citation for it, okay? Um, so make sure you're doing that for facts, statistics, anything you didn't know before you read it, that should get introduced as to where you learned it, and then a citation at the end. Y'all are gonna be using this model right here, um, where it says if you're quoting a source without the original pagination, use the paragraph number. Almost all of the sources that you get through the database don't have the original page numbers in them anymore. So all of us are gonna be using paragraph six, okay? Um, and that's all that needs to be in there. If you've introduced the author already and you've already told me the title, the only thing left to tell me is where in that article I can look to find that quote. So all it has to be is that parentheses, P-A-R period space six, right? And that's all that has to be there. Um, so you can see that a sentence with a quote in it and a citation at the end will look like this. He argues that, quote, rising temperatures for a few years is not a clear indicator of global warming, end quote, space, parentheses. Now that's a page number because it's a number alone in parentheses. Yours will look like this. Um, and then you close the parentheses and do the period. Um, one thing that will happen in Criterion is that if you've put another period in here, inside the quotation marks, it's gonna call your citation a fragment. Um, the citation is part of your sentence, it's just not part of the quote. So don't end your sentence here, end it out here, 
okay? Um, and that's something criteria and people are like, well, it was just calling all my citations fragments. And it's like, actually, it was showing you you should put an extra period in there where you didn't need it. <laughs> so uh, just, just be aware that criterion is going to look for those. Okay. And then, and this is pretty critical, some analysis is needed. And this is where you explain how this quote proves the point you're trying to make, right? Um, if you're saying that the number of black people executed is higher than the number of white people executed, and you give me some sort of shocking statistic, you gotta make sure I understand how shocking you find that statistic to be, right? Um, and make sure that you're bossing me around because maybe I don't find that statistic shocking, right? So you've got to be the boss and say, hey, that's, that's outrageous. Um, that number is way too high. It's out of proportion to the population overall. It's out of relation to the people convicted, whatever it is that you want to say. But make sure you boss me around and how I take that quote, okay? This is also, um, a lot of students get kind of confused here and they'll put a paraphrase of the quote. They'll put a quote in and then they'll say, this means that, and then say it again. And I don't need that. I'm a really good writer. I have a doctorate in reading. So I don't need any help understanding the quote, <laughs> right? What I do need is why I should care. This is your little so what. You've given me a quote. Now you're trying to say so what, right? So if you're trying to convince me who to vote for and you're quoting something that got said in the debates last night, you've got to convince me and say, well, hey, look, if he won't tell us whether he's going to pack the court, you can't trust him in office. Or, hey, if he doesn't seem to care that 16,000 people died of coronavirus yesterday, we shouldn't vote him into office, right? So whichever way you're going to go, you've got to make sure that you tell your reader how to interpret that quote that you're using. Does that make sense? So don't tell me what it means. I know what it means. I just read it, right? Um, but tell me why I care. Tell me what I'm supposed to do with that information. How does that prove that you're right, that the death penalty shouldn't be happening or should be happening, right? Um, and by the way, I have... I can see both sides on this issue. I will never assign an argument essay where your opinion will make me think less of you. <laughs> That's just a really dirty trick. So you can take either side on this, and I really don't care, right? Um, I mean, I have my own views, but I understand the other side. I respect the other side. It doesn't get me all worked up when people disagree with me about this. I know some people will assign things and then be really upset that people don't take their view, and I think that's kind of a nightmare. You're not in that position here, okay? All right, um, All right. so a couple of common sense reminders. These are important. Long quotes of more than four lines require block quote format, which is different than what's described above, so I would avoid them. Honestly, your readers usually skip a block quote and you don't want them to. So even in my articles that I publish in literary journals, um, I try to avoid them because your readers generally skip them. The only time you would use one is if they're so important that after your reader skips it, they'll realize they missed something and have to go back and read it. <laughs> and that's not usually the case in a little article that you're, in a little essay that you're writing for college. So generally speaking, keep your, your quotes like, one or two lines long, maybe one sentence, uh, and then put some analysis after it, okay? Um, never use uh, page numbers instead of giving context. So instead of saying, on, you know, in paragraph three of this article, he says this. You actually want to say, um, after he explains his view on it, he tells us some statistics, and the statistics are this, right? So use the context instead of the numbers. Um, then it reminds you to keep your source introduction separate. So in this paragraph, and I'm not going to read this one through with you, um, I just want you to connect what these numbers are. These numbers correspond to the job up above, okay? So if you see a little number one, that's job one from up above. If you see a little number two, and there's a two and a two, that means that's doing job number two from up above, okay? Um, job number three is doing job number three, and then the little four here is doing job number four. Uh, so that's just one way of organizing that. 
Um, but I'm actually going to close this and open up another document. Hold on. I'm going to move us for a second to open the other document. Um, the sample source paragraph has it done in a slightly different way. Um, and I think it's a little easier to follow. So I'm going to open that here for a second and let you take a look at that. This one's color coded. Um, so again, you can kind of see each job. It, it goes through those steps again. Um, so uh, if you're printing it, this is the one I'd print. That's okay. Um, and then here it's color coded. I'll make it a little bigger so we can see. Um, the black is the topic sentence, the blue is the source introduction, the green is quote integration, the red is the citation, um, purple is analysis, and orange is a paraphrase. And I put a paraphrase in there just to let you see that it still has the, um, hold on. it still has the he says phrase at the beginning and the citation at the end when I'm paraphrasing and putting it in my own words. Um, but this was information I didn't dream up on my own. I still got it from the text, so I'm still using that pattern, okay? Um, so when you're creating a source paragraph, this is what you want yours to look like. Notice a few things about it. It's long, <laughs> right? It has two quotes and a paraphrase. Um, yours might have two quotes and a statistic um, or two quotes and a couple of facts or three quotes. That's fine, but three things that you took from that source is good. It's got several sentences just introducing the source. Be patient with that, right? I don't use the source until like four or five sentences in, right? Um, and that after every quote, not just at the very end, but after everything that I use from the source, I offer my own thoughts, right? Um, so these are long paragraphs, right? If I double spaced this, it would go on to the next page, right? So they require some patience. Um, I want you to have this in front of you when you're writing your source paragraph, and I want you to go, okay, I'm gonna make mine sound just like this, except it's not about James Baldwin, <laughs> right? Um, so I want you to really follow this. We've got the step-by-step -step to tell you what you're doing. You've got a model to follow. Make sure yours look like this. Play that matching game. Oh, she has three sentences for this. Let me get my third sentence in there for this. Okay. Okay. She does. She tells me just about the author for a minute. Now, you don't have to give me background on the author that you're writing about. You may not know any background. You can just say James Mulroney is an author who writes for the Washington Post. And that's all you know, but you know he wrote for the Washington Post because that's where this article appeared. Right? So that's enough and let that be enough. You don't have to go do research on them or tell me what else they wrote or anything like that. Keep it simple. Okay. Um, this. Uh, so and then I and then I give a, a sentence for the title and I in the title, I say what it was basically about, and then I give a sentence of summary. So sentence for author, sentence for title, sentence of summary, um, and that is really good. Now, a summary doesn't require a citation because a summary is what I can think of to say about the article without looking at the article. Okay, I read it and I can talk about it. Um, and if I don't have to look at the article to check what I'm saying, I'm pretty safe that that's summary. If I've got to look at the source to say it, that's a paraphrase, and it needs a citation, okay? Um, even if I'm putting it in my own words, if I'm looking at the source while I type, you know that's coming from the source. If you remember it and you can say it without looking, that's a summary. Does that make sense? Hot dog. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to close that out. Okay, so these are all in the handouts that you have for this week. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna talk to you about is um, where to find these sources, okay? Um, and next week, I'm gonna go over the Works Cited list stuff, okay? This week, I just want you to find the sources, so I'm gonna spend our time this morning going over that. So the actual, the next thing I'm gonna do here is go to the Lawson website, okay? And this is where you start your research, okay? Um, 
So where on the Lawson website should I click to get to the Lawson library databases? What am I clicking on? Uh, nope, keep looking in that row though, you're close. God bless you, there it is. Clicking on library services. Okay, and looking at the screen again, where am I clicking to get to the databases? There it is, yes, okay, so our environmental reading is great. Okay, there are two databases I'd like you to choose from, and those are in A, Academic One File. So you can write that down, Academic One File will have a lot of great sources. And the other one is down here in O, where is O? L-M-N, the? Okay, that's super weird. Okay, I don't know why this says the, it should say O. Now I'm gonna contact the library about that. Um, this is an alphabetical order and this is between N and P. I don't know why it says the, it should say O. I'm gonna contact the library, that's super weird. Um, but you're looking at this opposing viewpoints. Now, keep in mind, this assignment was created with opposing viewpoints in mind. Okay, so I'm actually going to open that Opposing Viewpoints database. Okay, go away. Don't want that right now. All right, so it brings up a search, okay? And searching in a database is a little bit like searching in Google, but it's actually a little bit different because we, we're using what we call keywords instead of just a phrase. I mean, you can go to Google and you can just type in what's this rash on my butt and it will find poison ivy and <laughs> measles and all sorts of things. You can just type in whatever is in your head and it will sort it out for you. This is a little bit pickier, okay? So you're going to type in the main topic like death penalty and then you're going to use the word and and combine it with what you'd like to look for. Like, let's say you want to argue that it is expensive. So you would write in death penalty and cost. Okay. Let's say you want to argue that it's a deterrent, like it convinces people they shouldn't do bad stuff. So you would write death penalty and deterrent. And you'd get that, you'd, you'd start pulling articles that use those words. Okay, so if we did this, we and remember, if you're not turning up anything on death penalty, you could also call it capital punishment and racism or whatever it is that you want to combine for terms. So let's type in uh, death penal, not penalty, penalty and uh, let's see. Uh, cost. Now, look, you can say death penalty against death penalty and cost. And I want to help you sort through what you're seeing here. Okay. There are 31 academic journals. Those are good to use. Don't want to deal with the videos. You don't want to deal with the websites. Okay. You don't want to deal with audio. News. Sure, you can use a news source, that's fine. There are 2,000 of them, so that might be a lot to sift through. Primary sources, let's click on those academic journals. It's sorting those first, right? And then we wanna kinda look at them. Um, when and what to test for a cost-effective analysis of febrile illness test and tree strategies. That's not it. Right, so remember that you're looking, um, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing cardiac stuff here. This is super weird, I don't know why. Cannabis, not looking for it. So if you don't find it on that first search, don't give up. I think it just cut out death penalty. Death penalty and cost. See if that, there we go. All right, now there are eight viewpoint articles and it's putting those. So now we have something by Richard Dieter that says the death penalty is too costly. Now, how many viewpoints articles are there? 
eight, but how is how many is it showing you right here? Three. So in order to see all eight, you've got to click on that, and then you can see all eight. Okay. Um, cost of the death penalty outweighs its benefits. Um, does the death penalty serve the public good? Um, and so then you're seeing more of them. Okay. Um, also notice that if you were looking it up for the expense, you also suddenly see something about deterrence and you can go, oh, hey, there's another reason I can be against it or another reason I can be for it. Um, and four. Okay. Uh, the, uh, let's see, capital punishment and deter, it would be good if I could spell, deterrence, capital punishment and deterrence. Um, and then um, you've got 31 academic journal articles here um, and uh, so you can sort through those. You've got news articles, um, viewpoints, 103. We'll take a look at those. Um, and talking about de deterrence studies are inconsistent and scientific. Um, capital punishment is moral to prevent the taking of innocent lives. So if you're in favor of it, um, you're looking for those terms. It's a deterrent, right? Um, capital punishment is a deterrent. Okay, so we're finding some of those viewpoint things. Okay, so it's you and the search works the same way in Academic One file. Um, but let's bring up. Um, I want to bring something up because I want to bring up a source and make sure you know how to find information about it. Okay, so um, this is by Paul Rubin. It's from a book actually called Capital Punishment by Greenhaven Press. So it's going to use a different, um, let's see now, this is article commentary. Okay, um, so when you're looking at it, you're actually going to say that it comes from the Phi Kappa Phi Forum, okay, and that that's where it came from. It was collected in this book up here, but that's not where it originally came from. It originally came from Paul Rubin, um, and it's called Death Penalty and Deterrence. It was published in this on at this time in winter of 2002. So you've got to kind of look around for that information about the article and the periodical title. This is your periodical title, and it sometimes is accurate up above here, and sometimes it's not. So make sure you're looking everywhere for that information that you can recognize, okay? Um, if you're not sure, you can send me the link to it here in the database, and I can look at it and I can help you figure it out, okay? But you can only do that if you're working things ahead of time, okay? Does that make sense? You feeling pretty good about using the database? Okay. I'm going to stop this here, and I'm just going to take questions. What do you have for questions this week? This week, your goal is to find your sources and write one source paragraph. That's it. Yes. Um, if you um, aren't sure how to interpret um, like who like some information about it. That's why I think your assignment this week actually asks you to give me the links of your three sources and then do a source paragraph. Um, and I'm asking for the links in case um, you need help interpreting what those sources are. Okay. Um, now, I will say it did not make me log into the database, but I want to go ahead and I'm going to do a screen share for you again for a second because, uh, hold on, screen share for a second again. Um, when you get to that page at the library where you click on the databases, it may actually ask you, I'm trying to move this, it may actually ask you to log in, okay? Um, I'm going to actually... 
Okay, so it's not asking me to log in. But when it asks you to log in, you use your A number, your student A number, and your birth date. Okay, I use my faculty ID number and my birth date. Y'all use your A number with the A and your birth date. If it doesn't work, I want to show you something else. Okay, um, if it doesn't work, let's go to the home at the library. You see this box over here? That is a live chat with our librarians. Now they're not there at night, y'all. They work during the day, so make sure that you chat with them during the day. But if it's not letting you log in, don't email me, I can't help you. You can chat with the librarian over here by checking, and this is where I'll show you how it works. Uh, and I'm just gonna say, uh, hi was showing a group the databases today and noticed that the O was replaced by the word the super strange. Okay, um, and I'm just gonna put that in there and they know that that's me. If you're struggling to, with your login, chat with them and, and follow their instructions and follow through. If they tell you to call somebody and have them work on it for you or get you in the system or update you in the system or something like that, make sure you follow through with that, okay? Does that make sense? So if you're trying to do the login and you've used your A number and your, and your birth date and it's not working, go to this live chat, okay? I'm going to lower that live. So just go to that, ask a librarian and give them a chat. Okay. All right. Any questions about using the databases? Questions about source use, questions about the paper that you're aiming for overall. Um. Yes, it's going to be a body paragraph. Mm -hmm. Yes, the two databases that you'll choose are under A, Academic One File, or Opposing Viewpoints under O, or apparently the, which is weird, but it's the one between N and P. <laughs> Right, uh, and that's called opposing viewpoints. So either the opposing, that's the library getting back to me. It startled the living daylights out of me. How funny is that? Okay, um, where is the chat? Can't find it. Okay, anyway. Um, oh, thank you. That was a fix that should have been done. She'll review and have it fixed. Thanks again. So you can see uh, how quickly they got back to us there um, about the weird thing with the O. Um, and if you're trying to solve a problem and you're here and you're trying to solve it during the day, they're really quick to respond. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Okay. Yes, those are the two databases that you're using. Mm -hmm. You're just going to use three sources, so just grab three sources from those two databases. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Okay. <laughs> so the paragraph that you're writing this week will turn out to be one of the paragraphs that you use in the essay overall. I'm just having you do a piece of it and get some feedback before I have you invest in the whole thing um, so that you don't go too far down the wrong road. Okay? Okay. I want to be able to intervene and say, whoops, 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 fix this before you write a whole giant essay the wrong way. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, um, and I am going to uh, encourage, I'm really gr glad that y'all joined me. Of course, it's some of my best students joining me, but hey, I'll take what I can get. Um, I am going to post this 
uh, video that we've made together uh, if you want to go back over it. Um, so you can go back over it. Okay. Any other questions from this group? Okay. I'm going to stop recording. Uh,